this is Ted Flett with Golden Skate, and I'm joined now by Richard Gauthier. It's a very special day. Yes, very uh, special. First day is your birthday. Yep. Happy birthday. Thank you. 30 years old. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you were just inducted into the Skate Canada Hall of Fame. Yes. That's you know, looking very, very smart. Uh, tell, tell me about that. Tell us about that honor and what it means to you. Well, it means, uh, I remember when I started skating, I uh, always, I, I asked my coach at the time, is that what you do for a living? And she said, yes. And on that day, that's what I wanted to do. Like, I didn't skate to become a competitor or an international skater. I wanted to become a coach. So this proved that I made the right decision. And I'm very, very proud and very grateful to Skate Canada mm -hmm. and Dr. B in the Hall of Fame. If you were to look back at the years of coaching, what for you is a highlight? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> like, there's many highlights. Uh, one of the highlights for me, which is, has nothing to do with skating, but one of my team, a Polish team that I taught, they named their son after me. Oh, wow. And this proved that I made a difference in their life. And I, it's actually, I've gone through a few generations now, and they come back to me and they tell me, they like, don't talk about really skating. They talked about some of the life skills that I taught through skating and that I made a difference in their life. And at first, you first want to produce champion or skaters because that's what you learned. But then it didn't take long to me to figure it out that we make a difference in these kids' life. And uh, this is what I'm mostly proud of. Mm -hmm. And this week at the Canadian Tire National Skating Championships, you have been a busy man. I mean, you yourself and Bruno and your team yeah. are coaches to so many of the Paris teams. Yeah. You could practically, you know, station yourself permanently <laughs> at the boards almost for all the teams. How do you stay calm and cool and collected in a week like this? Uh, well, the thing is, it feels almost like at home, like the warm up. Rather than one team, they were all our skaters. So usually you try to look for other skaters so they don't get in the way. But my skaters are used to train together, so no one got out of the way. I told them it feels just like at home, except it's warmer and there's more people in the rink. <laughs> really. Fair enough, fair yeah. enough. So, of course, your you know, star pupils, Megan DeHammock and Eric Radford, arrived in Ottawa as the five-time national champions and the two-time world champions. They defended their title and are now six-time national Paris champions, mm -hmm. which is a record. Yeah. This has been a, 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 obviously a different season. Each season is different yes. for this team. They don't know autopilot, clearly. Every yeah. every year they you know introduce something different and new yeah. and develop. This year, talk to us about sort of the beginning of the season and, and where they've come to now in your perspective. Yeah, well, at the beginning of the season, after last year, I thought, okay, we're doing now a throw quad that's getting more consistent. But Megan wanted to do a throw triple axel in the short program. And she did, was able to, to do it. She's done some beautiful one. We've tried at Skate Canada, and then we've tried it the whole season. Some of it was good, some of it wasn't good, but on practice, she was starting to do them more and more. And at the final Grand Prix, she missed it in the shore. And then we realized that, actually, at first they were disappointed, but at the end I said, you know what, it's a good thing that we missed it here. Because I think if she landed at the final, she would have said, okay, let's do this for world. But then we also realized that by missing it, like we weren't gaining that much of a difference in points. And by missing it, then I could have really pulled us out from the last flight at World. So we decided not to do this in the program. And also what happened is because this was a, another new element, a risk element, when they skate the program, they kind of sort of step outside the program and then start focusing on that element, which we lost the whole flu of the program. Mm. So we realized by doing a true triple X, which is something so easy for Megan, that she can't uh, now just focus on the performance than just the technical elements. So we've decided after this one that this is what we're going to do for the rest of the season. We're gonna, not going to do the triple axel. Also, there's, she's had problem with a foot with a triple toe, double toe, double toe combination. So we've decided to change this and put a triple sow instead and combine the triple lutz. So this week I was very pleased with this because they got both of them. So I think it will help with confidence for the rest of the season. Mm. And we realize that it works. Like we've done now this competition with the Triple S Double Toe and the Triple Sour. I mean, they've had it in the past. And I remember when we had it in the past, it was on and off, but this week was just perfect. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think it will help us. It'll help her too for her confidence, but it just makes sense now to do this in the program. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Megan told the news media here that it was, she used the word, heartbreaking to take the triple axel out yeah. normally you would think for an athlete if the, it was decided 
okay, let's scrap this really difficult high risk element that you've been falling on. They think, okay, phew, it's off my plate. But she clearly is a driven competitor yeah. and wanted, wants to keep that in or wanted yeah, yeah. to keep it in. That, I what, mean, what does that tell I, us about I, her? I'm, I mean, I'm not surprised. Like the thing with Megan is, like I've said in the past, uh, think of all my athletes I've taught in 35 years. She's the hardest worker. Like you'll ask her to do 10 of something, she'll do 15. And she's the one that said, let's do tri triple axle. And she even the one that pushed for the quad. Last year, at the beginning of the season, she was doing two throw quads. She likes to push her own limit. And this is why she's disappointed that she can't go on and say, okay, we've done this at competition and now that she, I'm sure, I, I mean, for me, I think they have great chance to win the world again this year. But I'm sure in her case, she would have liked to win by doing this new element. Like mm. she likes to add on. And I think she's going to be like this till the end of her career. She's the type that pushes the limit all the time. Mm -hmm. And for those of us who are sticklers and we're counting points, by opting with the triple lutz, double toe, they're taking out what was the triple double double combination. Yeah. So talk to us about that decision. I mean, the, the points are pretty similar by doing the sow. It's just like the triple toe, double toe, triple toe wasn't that hard, but it was just hurting your foot. Mm -hmm. So by doing the sow, it's, uh, she doesn't, I mean, she's taking off from the left foot, but she doesn't put her toe into the ace. So it was taking less pressure on her foot. And I think it's going to help her just to be able to keep training for the rest of the season. Okay. By doing it like but, she. But, but no triple double double. Is what no, I'm they don't need the, the double double with you the sound so. no I don't think so and also like I've other team like the German team for example they were at France they haven't competed they're not competing at European because she had a foot I even doubt that they'll be competing this year because she's injured the Chinese were third they uh, or actually they were second mm -hmm. she had operation on both legs so I don't think this year is going to be a strong competition so I would like them to do, use this I mean the first year was stressful second year they want to defend their title now this year, if we pull out the throw triple axle and easiest jump for her to do, so she doesn't have to worry about the pain, they could really go out and enjoy the performance and really perform instead of focusing on some technical elements. Mm, okay. And I think it will help us on the, on the components. Okay. Like the second ball will just move up because of it. Right. You're obviously acutely familiar with the Paris competition scene globally. The Russians have, you know, certainly made the, the third or the, the new Russian team, not new, but yeah. a different Russian team won the Grand Prix final, yeah. uh, caused a bit of an upset and quite a stir in the, in the Paris world. What's your assessment now of the Paris scene in Russia? Uh, I saw the Nationals. It wasn't that strong. And this team is not really a new team. They've been there for a long time. Sure. It's just that They've by doing, the yeah, the team. yeah, and by doing the Tour Triple Axel, that's sort of when we realized that if we, she could have gone and done a throw triple that's like we're doing now, and that would have been a different result than yet. Mm. So that's when we realized, and their strong team from Russia also did not compete this season because she was injured. So I think the field isn't that as strong as let's say the last previous year. Mm -hmm. It still will count the other competition, but I think it'll make it easier for them to go out and I think they'll give them less stress. Okay. Is that is that tougher for a team like Megan and Eric who really love the high stakes, high pressure competitive scene? That's when they tend to deliver their strongest performance. For you in their case, I mean when they get a competition what other people are doing, it doesn't bother them. Like they really compete against themselves. And they're really the one good thing that this team has is when they get a competition, they're able to get into this bubble where there's not, I mean, it could be an explosion. I don't think they would hear it. And so whatever the other teams are doing, it's not something that, I mean, it drives them to train, the day-to-day -day training, when they know other people are doing something harder. But when it's time to compete, there's, this is not something that affects them, what other people are doing. Mm. Last question. Next season, of course, is the premier, the key Olympic season. Mm -hmm. Do you start planning already? Are you thinking about music? Are you thinking about technical elements? Uh, Where are you uh, at with that? Or when does that start? Yeah, well, actually, I mean, the, as far as music, it's Julie the choreographer that she's the artist and it's like a painter. She's deciding. I mean, she'll bring some different idea and I'm sure she's already had a few ideas. The good thing is now with the amount of years they've been together, she knows what works for them. So I'm sure choreographically wise, she knows where she wants to go. Technically, we'll see at the end of the season if this all worked. And I also want to see what other people are doing. Like, what shape they're in. I think last year there were a lot of people trying these throw quads and a lot of them got injured so I think they'll be less trying it. I don't think it'll be as strong 
but I think right now, for me, it's to keep the team healthy because mm. that seems to be the problem with a lot of the team. There's been a lot of concussion this year, even in my school, which I've, I mean, in 35 years, never had it before, but it seems to be something that's very popular. And now, I mean, doctors are very strict. I mean, I had Kirsten Mortara that was off for three months because of it. And I mean, I've had Mervyn, I've had a few teams that had this problem. Uh, so for me, in this case, like now that we're not going to try these difficult, hard things where she could really injure herself, it'll be to maintain, like to keep them healthy till the mm -hmm. game, really. Okay, great. Well, we look forward to watching them at Four Continents in the World Championships and, of course, next season. Thanks for talking to us and congratulations again on your induction into the Hall. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you.